Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, actually. Um, so while I will share my screen, I would like to start by um, uh, with this slide here, which is actually one of my last slides, but I thought it would make more sense to um, uh, bring your attention to uh, two of these references, which I've been, I, I will talk about them, some of the concepts, which is uh, these two here that you have um, the second and the, and, the, and the third one, actually the second one, sorry, and, the, um, and in that, the introduction to that book for, so the, it's about arts, um, arts-based methods for decolonizing participatory research and two, sp two specific chapters of that of that book, the introduction, and the one about uh, dance research uh, in a specific uh, context. Okay, so what I'll bring to you today is I'll, I'll divide the presentation in three parts, three main parts. The first one is a more kind of a more theoretical part where I will talk a little bit about, you know, some of the concepts that have been already mentioned here today by several people, but, but at least they, they seem important to, you know, for us to reflect on, on these practices. So in the first one is about, the first section is about decolonizing participatory research uh, through arts-based methods. And actually some of the questions, we are like basic questions, what are arts-based methods? What is participatory research? And what is actually the colonizing knowledge? So we've been talking about this a lot here this morning, but it seems important to you know to have an idea of, of uh, what do we mean, or at least from this author's perspective. So in this citation, I think it's very revealing about uh, what we've been trying to do as researchers uh, through a long through a long time. Um, it's actually been transformed and the meaning of what is truth and how um, there has been a, a, a reframing about what is knowledge and what can knowledge be a position in society if we, if we use it from, or if we made it from and use it from different perspectives. Um, and actually, this, this participatory research, a community-based participation, what are we talking about when we talk about this? We talk about research done uh, in close interaction with different types of groups, communities, and different types of individuals. And we have also many other concepts attached to, to this process. It is about you know, collaboration, it's about partnership, co-creation, and you know, understanding knowledge in a different way. And this is actually, I think, really interesting. And I have a lot of questions about this, about what does that mean to when Katarina was talking in the beginning about you know, transforming this, her research in multimedia, in the multimedia exhibitions. What, what are the impacts of that transformation on knowledge and how, how actually that knowledge gets to people and to communities and what is the impact of you know, having an approach like that? So what are the main ideas and the main changes on, on knowledge and how people in communities perceive knowledge and how does that actually impact a lot the way we look at societies in the way academics actually may start to look at uh, the type of work they do. Um, so in terms of arts-based methods, so they are um, any kind of social research or human inquiry that adapts the tenets of the creative art as a part of the methodology. And they can be used in different phases of the research. They can be a method, they can be also present in analytical processes and, they, and also in the interpretation and dissemination of research, as we saw here through many of the experiences that we have all been uh, hearing about exhibitions, films, and other types of um, ways of you know, communicating and disseminating research. So we talk about audiovisual, about creative writing, essays, novels, and many other 
multi-method formats of you know making research happen. Um, and there's there's a very you know strong component about the role of arts in in in, the, in participation in a way people relate with with their own knowledge. Uh, like we we have seen here, I think it was Patricia who was talking about diversity of ways of seeing. So actually, the arts based methods are very interesting for capturing this diversity of, of you know of ways of seeing, of forms of knowledge, of ways of you know trying to understand better what are the different resources and perspectives of different groups and individuals. So. Uh, uh, what about power, right? We've been uh, hearing about uh, uh, that. So what is what about the question of power, diversity, intersectionality, and the colonizing knowledge? Are we able to, through these approaches, to contest hierarchies, to you know value place-based cultural contests? And how do these approaches uh, facilitate dialogue among, among different groups? And the, the question of decolonization, which has many you know, definitions, but I'll, I'll bring to you uh, some of the uh, two of them, which are, you can, I mean, I can share the PowerPoint with you and some of these references are also accessible at the end. So there's a, we know that there's a variety of ways in which coloniality and hierarchical relations can uh, characterize the present world in our societies. In specific decolonizing, uh, uh, these authors understand them as a process of practice that actively seeks to transform colonial and Eurocentric research practices based on hegemonic Western epistemologies by trying to, you know, reposition the way uh, the research participants, and we are not only talking about academics, um, but all the people, all the organizations, all the intervenients in the research process, they need to be at the center of the research and not only looked at as, you know, objects or subjects or even subjects of that research. And that has a, an immense impact on the way we um, develop the knowledge itself. So what are, like my questions, what, what are those impacts? How do they, how those changes affect ourselves and the others. Um, okay, so, and then this, um, so research, as we know, always involves power. So we cannot think about it without, you know, being something that uh, is not, uh, it's neutral because it's never neutral. Um, and and um, but but the, the the issue here is how can these approaches, arts-based participatory research, make a difference, and what challenges do they bring to us, and what contradictions also. Um, and in terms of uh, you know some of the references, if I would have time, I would share with you some of these links, but I don't have time, so I <laughs> I advise you to go to them and do and do your uh, search. Uh, there's many approaches based on, you know, mapping, uh, co-writing, participatory service design, uh, movement as a research method, or other types of uh, indigenous research methodologies, which is the link you have on your right hand side, talk a little bit about that. Um, and also storytelling, um, and also other approaches related to more, you know, for example, light painting or others. So depending on the context where they come from, there are many ways of, you know, making this type of approaches happening. Um, and th these links that I, I have here give you an idea of three of those examples. Okay, so in terms of, you know, specific uh, cases or specific um, examples of how, uh, how this experience may happen, I, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you one, which was, um, it, it's called, um, it's a practical example of arts-based methods that is shared in one of these uh, references I've shown you in, in the beginning. And it's about performative and decolonizing research. So it's a, it's a reflection um, on a Nordic tertiary dance education approach which uses performative inquiry 
to um, to develop work with different types of participants that come also from different sectors, academic participants, but also uh, artists, but also you know residents and local people. So it tries to articulate different uh, perspectives. Um, in Malawi, it's a Malawian Norwegian uh, dance education project. So, and some of the questions is why is it important to speak about this, and how can dialogue happen in this different context, and how this example may be a way, you know, a perspective, a, a method of doing that. I'm really interested in understanding not only this, what are the implications, but what also are the the approaches and the experiences that we can use to, to show the different ways of making this type of research happening. So just for you to have a uh, an idea, it's it's not a, a, you know, a very detailed, um, um, I'm not detailing this a lot, so, it, but just for you to have an idea, it, it's a work that is, it's based on the articulation between a dance educational teacher and artistic leader, uh, and also and a musician or, or ethnomusicologist and music education researcher. So they've tried actually to um, uh, experience this research project, but at the same time write it together. So it was not only, you know, during the process of making the research happening, but it was also trying to articulate different perspectives on the experiences uh, and how, what were the impacts for the research and for the, you know, the outputs that could, would bring after that. Um, so um, the goal was to, you know, to understand better the, uh, this ongoing process of emphasizing local artistic and pedagogical understandings, practices, and becomings, and to investigate the people who are also making the research happen, but also the ones that were different participants in the process. So it was like, you know, at the same time, they were reflecting about their own research work, but they were also trying to integrate different types of participants in the process. Um, uh, so it, it was, you know, they, they anticipated that there were a lot of tensions and a lot of uh, um, perspectives that need to be negotiated. And I think this is actually, you know, the, the main point for me is how do you actually negotiate and, you know, develop uh, um, different types of methodologies that you can use to, you know, articulate those tensions and make them part of the process itself and not just uh, uh, ignore that there, there's actually different perspectives at stake and they, and they need, and this is, that is the richness of the process. So they need to be, um, they need to be seen as, as something that is also positive. Um, and, and this approach of uh, performative inquiry, which is, you know, a, a performative research and practice process, which was comprised of many moments that they identified as stop moments. Um, and this was actually very interesting because it was uh, um, uh, done in a way. Okay, so I'll go directly to the, to the process itself because I still wanted to share with you some of the work I've been done briefly, but uh, at the same time, I thought it was important to share with you this approach because it's, it's, it's really, I think, interesting to um, see it and then you can read more about it later on. So we had these stop moments, as I was saying, this stop moment one was about focusing on the relations as a way of researching, okay? So relations as discursively tension, as I was mentioning to you, uh, and you know, trying to understand better what opportunities and what challenges that brings to the research process. Then this performative inquiry as stop moment two was, you know, understanding um, the Ubuntu uh, approach as central for the traditional culture of Malawi and looking at this as a way of doing things, you know, as a way of, so the, 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 the perspective on the, the context of, of, of the cultural context that, that they were living in was also a way of understanding how the research could be done. Okay, so there was this participatory way of doing things, communal relationships becoming 
an individual as part of the community. So there were a set of principles that were those principles influencing directly the research process itself. Uh, and and the, the stock moment three was about this performative encounter between the different types of, 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 of participants um, in the research. So I, I read to you this citation. Uh, I knew I needed to engage bodily in the dances at the same time, putting myself at risk in some kind of a relation, creating a space where something would be at stake for me. I needed to try to engage with a community to which I obviously was on the outside. You know, so this perception of being an outsider, but at the same time, putting yourself in a situation of trying to be inside, of course, always knowing that you are, will be always an outsider. Okay, some examples of the work that I've been doing very shortly. I would need more like, I think, two minutes to finish, okay? Um, so I share with you an example of a project which has ended last year. We are trying to see the second phase of the project, how it would be. So it's a research action project for a creation of a cultural programming network for cultural agents of eight cities and municipalities of the central region of Portugal, articulating different types of components for cultural programming, artistic creation, but also the components of research and social science research in relation to these approaches of community participation. So it has happened in eight municipalities in the central region. Um, it has actually tried to develop uh, diagnostic tools about mapping process, question campaigns, where we try to involve the different sectors, artists, local associations, municipalities, and also academics in a joint process of mapping, asking questions to themselves and to the others. And based on that, uh, develop a set of regular activities that could be helpful to design uh, what we called projects of artistic intervention that were, you know, uh, uh, designed a, a based on this uh, social science research approaches to the groups, to the communities, to the different territories involved. So just for you to have an idea, we had a pre-workshop implementation phase where I tried to have an idea of what were the different connections, the different contexts that we were working with, and tried to establish the network of partners, individuals, and sectors that could be involved in this process from the beginning. And from there, we tried to design based on that information that was collected, try to define a structure for the artistic intervention projects that were then built, developed and implemented in these um, eight uh, municipalities that I've shown you before. Um, so it was an interesting project. It depended on the, the place where it happened. Sometimes we worked specifically with a specific street and with their, of course, residents, local associations, cultural, uh, um, cultural organizations, municipalities, and all types of different uh, uh, partners to design a pro to uh, jointly design an artistic project for that specific locale or for that specific street. This is an example for the Sofia Street in Coimbra. Um, and, and trying to you know, jointly reflect about the past, the present, and the future transformations you, we wanted to see happening in that specific urban space for this case. But we had other examples, for, for example, in Tabua, which is a nearby and but much smaller, much smaller uh, city, we had a different approach. So we had, the, the, the idea was always the same, but the implementation was different as we, as the fires were actually, the 2017 fires were actually the main theme that gave origin to this joint reflection. We divided the community groups in different areas of, of, of themed areas. And we asked them to think about uh, um, what were the implications, the problems, the issues that they saw happening in these different, as you see there in a slide, in these different fields. And from that, we uh, jointly designed this, uh, this, um, this, uh, this Arctic's intervention projects, trying to build, as you may see here, a framework 
for the project itself, which was also based on the scheme that you see now in the screen. Um, so we, and this was the base for the arts uh, intervention that took place in many approaches as exhibitions, air, as open air performances, um, you know, as, uh, you know, different types of also exhibitions. So it had many formats depending on the approach of each city and the, the process that took place in each city. So to finalize, these are some of our methodological aspects that we think are important and are very much, I think, related with what we have been discussing here today. But here, I think more from a more methodological perspective. So the need to have a flexible strategy for this type of research design, the need to involve these different participants, these different diversity ways of, uh, of, of seeing the needs, the future transformations of the specific urban or rural area, and, and also to, to, to aggregate these different knowledge perspectives in, on how cultural and arts may, ha may help to build you know, a better context or a better other possible, uh, other different possibilities for a future transformation of that specific site. And also the design of this integrated research practice for knowledge exchange and mobilization, which actually the arts-based approaches are very important and bring very valuable and I think innovative ways of you know, producing research and disseminating it. Thank you.